Hi, my name is Shashi Gowda and I'm Yimbo Ma. Today we are going to talk about Symbolics.jl, a new symbolic programming package that is easy to use, fast and flexible. Symbolics originated from ModelingToolkit.jl. Modeling Toolkit is a modeling and simulation package which heavily requires symbolic manipulation. We united its basic symbolic capabilities with a general term rewriting system and factored it out into Symbolics.jl package. So technically, Symbolics has existed for about two years now. Some of the goals of Symbolics are, we want to be able to handle hundreds of thousands of expression within seconds, to generate efficient code to compute arrays of expressions numerically, to have the flexibility in term representation for rewriting and performance purposes. In this talk, first we will give the overview of the features of Symbolics.jl from the perspective of an end user, and then we will talk about some tricks which make it possible for us to achieve these goals. So let's dive in and take Symbolics for a test drive. You can create variables using the add variables micro. By default, Variables represent either real numbers or real functions. Here, t, x, and y are real-valued variables, and u is a real-valued function. Any arithmetic on variables returns symbolic expressions. We see that the variables and the expressions are actually subtype of real. This allows us to propagate symbolic values into Julia functions that only accept real. You can also place expressions in containers like arrays. Pluto automatically typesets symbolic matrices into LaTeX. Many linear algebra functions work on this matrix. Here we see LU factorization, determinant, and linear solve. To simulate models from symbolic representation, we need to be able to generate fast Julia code which computes expressions on numerical inputs. Given a target expression and the inputs, build function generates the Julia AST for an auto place and the in place function, which computes the target expression. Then we can evaluate the AST to turn it into a callable Julia function. Build function is also smart enough to generate threaded code to turn on parallelism, use the parallel keyword argument. If the target expression is a sparse array, the generated code will also encode the same specity pattern. Not many symbolic programming packages care about generating efficient codes that compute expressions. Those that do generate code in a different language, like C or C++, and require a separate compilation step. But because Julia is just in time compiled, we can manipulate expressions, generate code, and then compile and run the generated code all in the same section. That is what Symbolics.jl excels at. Symbolics.jl has powerful tools to compute all kinds of derivatives. Here, we compute gradient of a 100 variable Rosenbrock function. You can call Jacobian and Hessian functions to compute dense Jacobian and Hessian respectively. If a Jacobian has many zeros in it, Symbolics can first perform a very efficient pass to determine the sparsity pattern of the Jacobian and then compute only the non-zero elements. Here we see that the dense Jacobian takes 125 milliseconds to compute while the sparse Jacobian takes only 20 milliseconds. If you need the sparsity of the Jacobian, that can be computed using the Jacobian sparsity function. The same optimization is available for Hessian as well, although the speed up is less pronounced.
This is a good time to take a break and look at the underlying implementation of expressions in symbolics. First and foremost, every real valued expression is wrapped in a type called num. Num is a subtype of real. This we do the for the purpose of being able to dispatch on existing code that only works on real numbers. Once we unwrap a num with this unwrap function from symbolics, we can actually explore the tree which it contains. Here we have a nice diagram of the expression tree of the expression sine of cosine of x. We see that the unwrapped expression is of the type term term itself is not a subtype of real. Further, we only use three functions ever to access the internals of an expression tree. The first function is isTree. It will tell you if an expression is actually a tree or not. In this case, it's true. The second function is operation, which will give you the operation of the topmost level of the expression. And the third function is arguments which gives a vector of arguments of this expression. Notice here that the arguments itself contains an expression, which we can drill down and see is a tree itself, and the operation is cosine. Arguments is a vector of a single symbol x. And the type of the symbol here is sim. You may notice the parameter real with sim and term. This is Symbolic's internal type inference, keeping track of types of expressions. If we take care never to wrap nums itself in another expression so that there are no unnecessary pointer redirections, and we can always safely unwrap a num and get a recursively walkable expression tree. We saw the term type, which is the most generic expression representation. It just stores the operator and arguments. But there can be other representations. For example, the plus operator on real valued expressions returns an add expression. An add contains a numeric coefficient, in this case 5, and a dictionary, which represents a linear combination. The keys are sub-expressions and the values are coefficients these expressions are multiplied by. When adding two adds, the dictionary is merged together. This is both space and time efficient. We essentially also simplify the addition while combining the dictionaries. In the case of the loop seen here, using term representation, would make the size of this expression z1 grow linearly with the length of this loop. But since we are using add, we can be sure that the size of the expression remains fixed and small. Similarly, we use the mul type to store product of terms. The mul type stores a numeric f coefficient and a dictionary. The dictionary contains factors. The keys are terms or expressions, and the values are powers they, these expressions are raised to. Again, the important thing to note is that it does not matter what the representation is, but the expression representation must support the expression interface. Namely, it must define each tree operation and arguments. This allows for generic expression manipulation code. Speaking of which, Symbolics has a rule-based rewriting language. It looks something like this. We use the rule macro with the pair of expressions. 
the pattern and the consequent expression. The tilde x here denotes a slot. It matches anything which appears as sine of 2 times something. The occurrence of tilde x on the right hand side substitutes the match. A rule behaves like a function which takes an expression and returns a rewritten expression if the pattern matches. So here applying the rule on sine of 2z returns 2 cosine of z times sine of z. You can see that tilde x was matched with z and substituted on the right hand side. However, if you try to match sine of 3z with this rule, it just returns nothing, which denotes that the pattern did not match the given expression. Here's another rule. And its application on sine of alpha plus beta. Now we will introduce a new experimental feature of symbolics. We have already seen arrays containing symbolic expressions, but in symbolics 1.0, variables themselves can represent arrays. We can create these variables with the at variables macro. We specify the index ranges of the dimensions of the array. Currently, the index ranges must start with 1. Here, we construct a matrix A and vectors B and C. A has size 10 by 20, B is of length 20, and C is of length 10. Operations on array variables propagate shape and type information. Notice as I change the expressions here, the size updates in the below cell. The operations also fail with the dimension mismatch error if the dimensions don't match. The error message will show the expected dimension. Let's take a look at how indexing on symbolic arrays works. First, an expression like map sine of a star b just returns map sine of a star b. It does not create an array of expressions. It just represents the operations we want to perform as is. Now, if we index a single element from this array, we get an expression which just denotes the indexing. But sometimes, we need to compute the expression in terms of the individual elements of the symbolic arrays involved. This is where symbolics.scalarize function comes in. If given an indexing expression, scalarize turns it into one which is based on individual elements. Sure enough, we get the second element of this operation expanded out in great detail. We see that it's the sign of the dot product of B with the second row of A. While scalarize works on a single scalar expression, collect on a, an array, calls scalarize on each element and returns an array of expressions. Here we collect a slice of the matrix A and get back a matrix of expressions. 
here we are collecting a bunch of expressions from the previous expression we were looking at let's inspect what array operations look like under the hood to begin with the type of an array operation is ARR. We see that this is a subtype of abstract array. Further, it is an abstract array of a real type. An element of an array is of the type num. We have seen before that num is a subtype of real. When we unwrap an ARR object, we get back the underlying representation. The variable A unwraps to a symbol whose symbolic type is matrix of real. Unwrapping A star B is more interesting. It is a new type of expression representation called array op. Array op is specially designed to encode array operations. It is a pretty versatile representation, so let us dig into it a bit more in the next few slides. Array op encodes a special notation which completely captures an array operation. Here we have the function show array op, which pretty prints an array operation in terms of this special notation. First, we look at transpose. The operation here encodes that the ijth output is the jth element of the input. Next, we see the operation a star b, a matrix vector product. Here, the notation becomes a bit more involved. The ith element of the output is a i k times b k. Notice that the left hand side does not have the index symbol k. This means that the ith element is computed by summing over all a i k times b k for all possible values of k. In physics, this notation is known as Einstein summation. It can capture tensor contractions in general. A matrix vector product is a simple tensor contraction. Array op can also encode array slicing. Observe here that the notation says the ijth output is the ijth input. However, it also qualifies for what values of i and j this is true. Namely, i goes from 2 to 8 and j go goes from 8 to 16. Summation along a dimension can also be encoded in this way. Here, we look at sum of a along the dimension 2. The notation says that the i, comma one element of the output is the ij element. And notice that j does not appear on the left hand side, which means that the dimension j is summed over. Notice the use of 1 on the left hand side. This creates a singleton dimension. That is, the size of the output will be m cross 1, where m is the number of rows of a. Now, we may want to encode not only summations, but also arbitrary reduce operations. This is easily allowed by storing a reduction function to use in place of plus in a tensor contraction. Let's change sum to prod and see what the notation looks like. We notice that the extra star that appears at the end of the notation. Note that the array op notation can be nested. 
Here we see a broadcast on a matrix vector product. You can see that the matrix vector product array op is embedded within the outer broadcast array op. In the next example, we see a matrix vector product where the matrix is a slice of another matrix. The slicing array op is embedded within the matrix vector product array op. Here, the index i has two scopes, one within the inner array op and one in the outer array op. They are to be understood as different symbols. Using this notation, we can encode a variety of heavily used array operations. Slicing or get index, map reduce, broadcast, matrix 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 vector products, and even custom tensor contractions. At first, one might think that the array op is an extra step and array operations could just be encoded as terms. But there are a number of benefits to using this notation that makes the array symbolics code concise and less prone to bugs. We can add and update features on all array operations in one fell swoop. For example, we implemented shape propagation simply by looking at which output indis indices correspond to which input indices. When a symbol is used to index multiple arrays, we can also institute dimensionality checks and print friendly error messages. Element type can be inferred by simply looking at the element type of the right hand side of an array op expression. The scalarize functionality we saw above can be implemented by substituting the required indices in place of the output index symbols of an array op. This also means that we don't have to compute all the elements of the output, only those which are required by scalarize. In the future, we will be leveraging this notation for a lot of neat purposes. These would have been otherwise impossible or hard to implement. These features include loop fusion, which can combine loops between operations, optimizations involving trade-offs between temporary memory and computation in operations like matrix chain, chain multiply, automatic differentiation, you can simply differentiate an array of expression in general and get an automatic differentiator for all operations we mentioned in the previous slide. We can also implement unified code generation on all array operations using packages like Tulio.jl. Tulio takes a notation similar to array op and uses loop vectorization.jl and other packages to generate instruction parallel, blocked, and threaded Julia code to compute these operations on numerical input. We would like to acknowledge help and guidance of Chris Rokakis, Chris Arrod, Chris Lafman, Alexander Shelley, Luke Adams, Michael Abbott, Raul Shah, Alan Edelman, all contributors and users. Because of lack of time, we have glossed over some useful features namely the rewriters and code generation primitives. More information about these topics can be found in the links shown here. We are also excited about the upcoming integration with the meta theory package. This will open up new ways to optimize and simplify expressions. You can also check our recent paper on symbolics on archive. Thank you for listening. Happy JulaCon.